Hello again everyone, Missouri Prepper 299 here. I just wanted to go over briefly a criterion I use for choosing my SHTF firearms. First off is cost. Buying one expensive firearm to protect your family is a serious mistake. You must be able to present a strong defensive front in the event of a disaster like Katrina. Bad people look for weak, easy targets. So don't be weak and don't make it easy. The more people you have that are armed and trained, the better. Military surplus firearms are a good place to start looking. They're proven designed both specifically for the purpose you need. When saving for your firearm, also save for the ammunition. Getting three or four boxes of ammo when you get your firearm is a good start. Setting aside $20 every paycheck or as often as you can will go a long way towards building a stockpile. Better yet, look for bulk ammo to purchase and split the cost with a friend. It's always cheaper to buy ammo in bulk. Reliability. After you have your firearm, field strip and clean them completely. Then take them to the range and run 200 rounds through them. This is the break-in period for most firearms. If they're going to malfunction, generally it will happen here. Note any problems you have and address them immediately. Make sure your firearms will run a wide variety of ammunition from different makers. Every SHTF firearm you own must be dependable. If it isn't, replace it. Your life depends on these tools, so don't let anything get in the way of that goal because failure is not an option. Finally, always keep your firearms clean. Durability. If it looks fragile and it has a bunch of warning on it, like only for use in climate controlled environments by gentle people with gloves, and I'm exaggerating here, don't buy it. You want a firearm that will take punishment if it's given. Strong, robustly made parts are less prone to breakage. When things go bad, you don't want to trust your life to junk. Stick with proven winners. Accuracy. Make sure that your firearms are capable of consistent accuracy at 100 yards. If they can hold a 1 inch to a 4 inch group, you're good to go. They need to be hitting where you're aiming as well. Point of aim needs to equal point of impact. Make adjustments to your sights as needed or reevaluate your shooting technique until you get consistently tight groups. If your firearms still won't meet these requirements, replace them. Ease of maintenance. Whatever you choose needs to be easy to clean and repair. Also, the fewer tools you need to do the job, the better. Think of worst case scenarios where you would have to clean or repair the firearm and decide if it meets your needs. Weight. Simply put, lighter weight equals fast transitions from target to target, and the weight you save here can be better used to carry other things you may need. It's a trade-off you'll have to decide for yourself. Common calibers. There's a reason Army standardized ammunition. All of my SHTF firearms are in the following calibers. For handgun, 40 and 45. For rifle, 5.56, 7.62 by 51, and 7.62 by 39 because these are the most commonly used and readily available rounds. I do have other calibers, but they're not my frontline choices for SHTF, and I do reload for all of them. Another thing you may want to consider. And finally, your ability to become proficient with the firearm. You can have all the firearms you need and all the ammunition to feed them, but without practice and training, you're just swinging the hammer at the nail and missing. Train often, train hard, and train like your life and the lives of your loved ones depends on it. Read everything you can on the topics. Find instructors that can teach you. Practice as much as you can and then pray to God that you'll never need it.